Hey guys, welcome to our second edition of Ship Spotlight here on Matani.com. Like last time, I'm your host, Zedia, better known as Z. Today we'll be taking a look at World of Warships once again, and specifically the warship Congo. We're going to talk about its historical significance, as well as give you some tips and tricks as far as using it in-game. Now, you may have noticed me call the Congo a warship and not a battleship. That's because the Congo was actually reclassified a number of times throughout her lifespan. She was designed by a British naval engineer and launched in 1912, but on launch date she was actually considered a battle cruiser. The Congo took part in World War I, but was never actually involved in any major engagements. In 1922, the Washington Naval Treaty was signed. This severely limited Japan's ability to build new capital ships. So what did Japan end up doing? Well, they decided to upgrade their World War I battle cruisers. Between 1929 and 1935, the Congo underwent some major reconstruction and became a battleship. After invading China, Japan resigns from the League of Nations. They are no longer restricted by the Washington Naval Treaty. Thus, the Congo once again is put in for upgrades. In 1941, she was actually considered a fast battleship. Much of her old and aging equipment had been replaced, and she was now top of the line. The Congo was extremely fast. She could keep up with carriers and took part in a number of battles in World War II. The Battle of Midway, Guadalcanal, Philippine Sea, and the Battle of Leyte Gulf, one of the largest naval engagements in history. And who was at the front lines? The Congo. Although a battle-hardened veteran of two world wars, the Congo would eventually find herself at the bottom of the ocean. In 1944, shortly after the Battle of Leyte Gulf, the Congo, Yamato, and Nagato were en route to a new deployment. Unknown to them, the USS Sea Lion, a United States submarine, had them in its sights. The Sea Lion launched 15 torpedoes, two of which found the Congo. The Congo's crew kept her afloat for almost three hours. As the order came to evacuate, her forward magazine exploded and took 1,200 crew members to the bottom. The Congo. Well, what can I say? I was extremely excited to get into it. The first hull configuration is actually better than most ships. At first glance, you notice that you're a bit slower, as well as you're missing the scout plane you had. Both issues are not a big deal. The stock Congo is faster than most battleships, as well as has better firing range than its predecessor. In addition, she has one extra turret, bringing her total to eight cannons. Once you upgrade everything on this ship, you'll find yourself in a faster ship with ridiculous range. The Congo can be a bit tricky to play, and you have to be careful and not get complacent. Yes, you have the speed and the hit points of a battleship, but if you rush into a group of cruisers, you'll quickly find that your hull will melt faster than you can use your repair packs. I recommend staying back with the pack. Use your range to pick off battleships as well as any other smaller ships. Pay attention to the battlefield. You may find that your team will need you to bring your speed and range to the weak side. Last but not least, do not forget to use your scout plane, but make sure you have a nice juicy target and are fully reloaded. You want to get the most amount of shots off during the limited flight time that the scout plane has. Well guys, thanks again for tuning in to our second edition of Ship Spotlight. If you haven't done so already, go check out the USS Omaha Ship Spotlight. Also, if you want to see more of these, leave a like. Subs will never hurt, and for latest in gaming and news articles, please don't forget to click the link and visit themitani.com. Well guys, enjoy the grind, stay cool, and thanks again for stopping by. Thank <laughs> you.